Nirukta. You wrote down everything. Nirukta is phonetics. Nirukta is etymology, sorry. What is etymology? Root word. Hmm? You study the origin of words. That is etymology. Pada henge uttitala, adana etymology and there. Kalpa is ritual. Shiksha phonetics, how do you remember? SP. Chanda metrics, CM. Gayatri mantra is in which mandala of Rigveda? Gayatri. Yeah, which, which mandala? Gayatri. Clue. Third mandala. Okay. Gayatri is in third mandala. <clears throat> which was the first testament of the mankind? First testament. Like we have Bible. Which was it? Rigveda. Right. Where is the next question? Satyameva Jayate is in which Upanishad? Mandaka Upanishad. Satyameva Jayate. Satyameva Jayate. <coughs> Karma theory is in which Upanishad? Which Upanishad? Theory of Karma or Transmigration of Soul? Any guess? It is Brihad Aranyaka. Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad contains what? Karma theory. That is transmigration of soul. Caste system is mentioned in... Where is it mentioned? Yeah, Manusruti also is mentioned, but in the... This thing, where is it? Rigveda. In Rigveda, where is it mentioned? Hmm. As we have been a patriarchal society, it is in Purushartha Sukta. Purusha Sukta. Origin of caste system can be traced from Purusha Sukta. Ayurveda is part of which Veda? Ayurveda. Atharva Veda. Ayurveda is part of Atharva Veda. We'll go to the next question quickly. Bro, can you read for me? Burials were found within the house. Okay. See the first statement. The megalithic culture started about 3000 years ago. Okay. I am a novice. I don't know anything. I am going to the UPSC and I am seeing this question. Okay. What will be my reaction? Megalithic culture started about 3000 years ago and is seen exclusively in South India. What will I do? <laughs> True. I will go to the next option. I will leave it here. Okay. Megalithic burials had a distinct feature of having various objects along with the dead like pots, iron weapons and gold ornaments. What is megalithic burials? What did they do in megalithic burials? Huh? Yeah, yeah. They used big boulders with this. Like now we have symmetries. They use big boulders on the... And they thought that the, the person who dies will take, him, take all the, these things for the next generation when he is born again. So they stuffed all these with him in his uh, coffin and put a big uh, stone on that. And that's called megalithic burial. That's all. 
Okay, so they had the distinct feature of having various objects with the dead like pots, iron weapons, and gold ornaments. So, what do you think? Yeah, you ask me why gold ornaments, right? <clears throat> when a person, for example, you you like gold. You don't like gold. A person who likes gold, they put gold. They are not telling that uh, it is specific. Specifically, they are not telling only gold ornaments were put. A person who likes gold will go with gold ornaments. A person who likes iron weapons will take iron weapons and die. Okay, they they will stuff that. When he dies, okay. Imagine I die. I like iron weapons. Okay. After I, after my death, they'll stuff iron weapons with my body, and uh, they'll leave it like that. They'll put a big stone for the next generation to come. So that uh, I'll go with the iron weapons. They think that next generation, if I'm born, I'll be born with the iron weapons, and I can be a strong warrior or something. Okay. With pots, a potter, so that he'll be buried with pots. A person who likes gold ornaments with gold ornaments. So this option is correct. And in other parts of the country, in places like Inam Gam, burials were found within the house. We don't know. We don't know about this option. We know have a place called Inam Gam, and we they are telling there are burials found within the house. Maybe, may not be. Come to the first option. What is the first option telling? Read it. What is the first option telling? About three thousand years ago. They're telling about three thousand years ago, this was found only in, exclusively in South India. See, when this comes three thousand years ago, you can go for time reference. Okay, recently, three thousand years ago, some time ago, all these are time reference. They are supposed to be wrong, most probably, like eighty eighty five percent of the question papers. When it's all UPSC papers, you'll get to know this. For now, be sure that uh, any statement with three thousand in your future papers, like years, recently, or any such option comes, those are time reference. When you go with time reference, such statements are wrong. And this statement, there are two statements here. Meghalaya culture started about three thousand years ago, and is seen exclusively in South India. Okay, this statement might be correct. We don't know three thousand years ago or five thousand years ago. We don't know. And this one, exclusively, this is a extreme word. Exclusive in South India, they might be found in Deccan also, or J and K. Or every place they are found normally megalithic burials. So this is wrong. These two are correct. What are the options we have? <clears throat> they are asking which of the statements are correct. So option is B, two and three. Understood, right? Everybody. What is time reference? When, when, what happens when uh, there is a time reference in a statement? Are they correct or wrong? They are mostly wrong. So now coming to the second question, which one are we discussing? Sixth one, right? Sixth one. <coughs> Where is sixth one? Hmm. In context to the Magadhan Empire, consider the following statements. Magadha Empire had vast forested areas. Where was Magadha spread? Magadha Empire, where is it spread? Bihar. Bihar. Okay, near Ganga Valley. Before, before the uh, urbanization flourished, they were normally forested areas only. Okay. And what are the iron ore mines found now? Now, presently? Uh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Jaria. All the mines are found in. This reason only. So, what is the statement telling? Is it correct or wrong? Correct statement. This is the right statement. Magadha Empire was, had vast, vast forested areas and iron ore mines, which played a crucial role in supremacy of the other kingdoms. Rivers like Ganga and Yamuna also flowed through Magadha. Be careful. When they give and, they are giving you to confuse you. They can give right option also. They can give wrong option also. They are giving and to confuse you. Okay, Ganga. Ganga is right. Magadha. Magadha is in Bihar. Ganga flows through Bihar, right? Yes. We have floods in Bihar. Ganga flows through Bihar. So Ganga is right. Yamuna. Where does Yamuna flow? UP, UP Delhi. Delhi main stream is Yamuna only. So Yamuna is supposed to be wrong. So this statement, what is it? Wrong. Wrong. Because Ganga is right. 
m0 is wrong. So 2 is wrong. What all gets eliminated? A, 1 and 2 is wrong. And D, 2 and 3 is wrong. We are left with 1 and 3. Okay? We are left with 1 and 3. We have to choose among these. Normally, if you like, just look at the options. There is this possibility also. 1, 3. You will have a possible, that, that's called singularity technique. This is also, there is 75 to 80 percent probability in UPSC. The chance of these two being correct is 75 to 80 percent correct. Okay, not 100 percent. Not in all questions. This is called singularity. Okay. So, answer will be between 1 and 3. What is the answer? Why? Patliputra was not the captain. Rajgir. Rajgir was the captain. Okay. First captain. Then they shifted to Patliputra. So, this statement also is wrong. Left it 1. So, we will have 50% of getting it correct. 1 and 3. If you don't read the statement also, you don't know anything about these statements. You just know the options. Okay? You just know the options. These are the options. You can safely bet you have 50% of getting this answer correct using this technique. 1 or 3. This will apply only for 70 to 75 percent of the percent of the questions. Okay? You apply this in the next exam, see if it is correct or wrong. <coughs> next question. <coughs> Everyone is understanding, right? Buddha belong to which clan? Among the tribe? Which one? Okay. Sakya clan. Okay. Mahavira? Which tribe? Naya. It's called Naya or Natri. N-A-Y-A. Mahavira clan too? Naya tribe. Naya. <coughs> Which are the earliest plants to be domesticated? Plants. Wheat and barley. <coughs> Which question are we in? Seven. See, read the statement. Second question. Vajji had a different government model called Gana, which unlike monarchy had numerous rulers, all having equal powers. Okay? Capital of Vajji, Kaushambi, had the river Yamuna passing through it. Okay? Which is the first statement. Had a different government model called Gana. Is it right? During what happened, during the, this Vajji, there were different uh, tribes, clans or tribes like Vajji, Magadha, <coughs> so many were there. Vajji was one among them. In Vajji, what had happened, this uh, Buddha belonged to one of the Gana. Okay? So, in Vajji, there are different government models, as they said, <coughs> called Gana, which unlike monarchy had numerous rulers, all having equal powers. There are different, different rulers. Among themselves, they are split. They split the powers among themselves and they had equal powers, all the rulers. Though this statement is correct. But coming to this statement, capital of Vajji, Kaushambi, had the river Yamuna passing through it. You think it's correct? <coughs> Why? It's wrong. Capital of Vajji, Kaushambi, it doesn't pass through Yamuna. It passes through some other river. Which is that river? Ganga. Ganga? No. Yes, 
What G is in uh, Bihar, nearby Bihar, UP Bihar region, Koshi. See, this first statement, that's why they are giving a comma here. Capital of Vajji is not Kaushambi, first of all. Okay, capital of Vajji is... <coughs> Any, uh, anyone knows what is the capital of Vajji? No, right? Kaushambi was capital of Vatsa. Okay, so only one only is the right answer. These statements you need not worry. They will not ask it directly. You just have to glance once, which are the Janapadas and Mahajanapadas, that's all. They won't... Kaushambi is capital of uh, Vatsa. Vajji's capital? Vajji's capital is, I don't know, I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow. Which one? Ujjain. Ujjain it seems. Next question. Can anybody read for me? Hmm. Okay. They ask you which of the fairs are. We'll come with the last option, Viharas. What do you get to know by this term, Vihara? Resting place. Vihara itself is Vihara. Vayu Vihara. Okay. So it's not Buddhist temple. So this statement is wrong. So four is wrong. Which option we can eliminate? C we can eliminate. You left it other three options. Was Panini a Sanskrit grammarian? Yes. yes. No, three is right. Three are there in all options. Okay. Before going to the options, see the options. All options are three. So three should be right. Okay. Now going to second option, bhikkhus. Buddhist travelers who went around asking for food. Who are bhikkhus? Bhikkhu. Now what do you know now what do you call in Kannada for bhikshukar? So bhikkhus were nothing but who traveled, who went around asking for food. Do you think it's right? Yes. It is right. You can make a comparison, right? Bhikshukar or bhikkhus, the same. Two and three are correct. Two and three are correct. You have marked this one as wrong. You have left it. What options? <coughs> Can we eliminate this? A and D. Okay. Now, rules of Buddhist Sangha are in Sutta Pitaka. Hmm. So, this is wrong. So, I will tell you what uh, rules of Buddhist Sangha. Which Pitaka is talking about it? Vinaya Pitaka. <clears throat> what are Buddhist temples called? Chaityas. Viharas were resting places for the monks. Understood, right? Everybody? Go to the next question. Sutta Pitaka is about Buddha's teachings. Sutta Pitaka is Buddha's teachings. Vinaya Pitaka is rules to be followed by the monks. And there is Abhidhamma Pitaka. Philosophy. philosophy. Abhidhamma Pitaka is about philosophy. <coughs> Sutta Pitaka contains main teaching of Dhamma of Buddha. Write down this. There are five Nikayas in Sutta Pitaka, which are important. Five Nikayas. Nikaya. Five Nikayas. Digga. D-I-G-H-A. Madhyama. Madhyama or Majjima. Samyukta. 
అంగుటార అండ్ కుద్దక్క కేహెచ్ యు డిడి ఏకే కేహెచ్ యు డిడి ఏకే సంయుక్త అంగుటార ఏఎన్జియు టిటి ఏఆర్ ఏ దీస్ నికాయస్ ఆర్ విచ్ పితక వాట్ డస్ అభిధమ పితక డీల్ విత్ వాట్ డస్ వినయ పితక డీల్ విత్ రూల్స్ ఆఫ్ బుద్ధ సుత్త పితక టీచింగ్స్ ఆఫ్ బుద్ధ దీస్ పితక ఆర్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఫ్రమ్ ఎగ్జామ్ పర్స్పెక్టివ్ నౌ ఐ టెల్ సమ్ రిపబ్లికన్ స్టేట్స్ అండ్ ద క్యాపిటల్ in uh, this uh, clans tribes we discuss in mahajanapadas malla malla's capital is kusinara how do you remember mk malla is kusinara kusi nara vajji who was the vajji's capital you are right? vajji is vaishali va va vajji remember vajji vaishali va 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 vajji is vaishali what is kusinara is capital of which state or clan tribe malla mk you can remember gandhi malla maku kamboja there is a place called kamboja any guesses what was the capital of kamboja king in kannada is called raja so it is rajapura how do you remember this kara remember kamboja is very hot sorry it's spicy kara kamboja rajapura or kamraj you can remember kamra that will be more easier kamboja is rajapura kuru any guesses what is the capital of kuru hastinapur other name for hastinapur is what is delhi's other name previously indraprastha kuru is indraprastha these are all republican states those days <coughs> some monarchian states also right now right on fast tell me all the republican states malla capital was kamboja how do you remember kamraj okay <clears throat> vajji's capital was wa wa vajji vaishali then next monarchies right vatsa vatsa capital was we saw it in the question kaushambi remember virat kohli no that will get confused వచ్చ ఇస్ కౌశల్ అవంతి ఉజ్జయిని ఆర్ మహిష్మతి అవంతి ఇస్ మహిష్మతి రిమెంబర్ తితి తితి ఇన్ ది ఎండ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ తితి సో అవంతి ఇస్ వాట్ ఇస్ క్యాపిటల్ మహిష్మతి సో రిమెంబర్ తితి these are monarchs what i am telling now vatsa avanti anga anga is champa capital of anga is champa last ones sursena sursena is mathura okay before going to ashoka does anyone know how ashoka was born who was ashoka's father bindusara grandfather chandragupta maurya what is chandragupta maurya's religion jainism what does bindusara follow ajivika see this bindusara bindusara was a king who conquered most for the gupta the mauryas mauryas okay who conquered most but whose name do you hear 
Ashoka and Chandragupta Maurya. Why? Bindusara, what he did was he sent his wife in exile, or he sent out, uh, he sent her out of the palace. Okay, and when she was pregnant, <coughs> what happened? She was pregnant outside the palace. Okay, it, this story is interesting. So, uh, her nine months was spent in exile, out of the palace. She she couldn't get all the care of her husband. What Bindusara couldn't give her. So what happened one day? This Ashoka was born. Do you know why his name is Ashoka? No idea. Shoka. She was in Shoka. Okay. Bindusara, when he saw a boy, a, a boy child is born, he kept his name as Ashoka. Her Shoka was gone. He took her also back to the palace. He took, uh, she took Bindusara's wife, was welcomed to the palace and he was named Ashoka. That's why Ashoka got his name as Ashoka. <clears throat> Chandragupta Maurya. Ashoka followed Buddhism. Chandragupta Maurya followed Jainism. Bindusara followed Ajivika sect. Ajivika, they don't believe in anything. No, no, it's a different sector. <clears throat> See, Ashokan edicts and inscriptions were mostly written in the language of Prakrit using the Brahmi script. We don't know which language. We have two languages, Pali and Prakrit, okay, in the ancient times. During uh, Buddhism and Jainism, we have two languages, Pali and Prakrit. So, from this we don't know. What was it written? We don't know. We have some inscription at, in Karnataka at Maski and Sannati. Visible, right? Maski and Sannati. Maski is in uh, Raichur, Sannati is in Yadgiri. Okay? <coughs> so, the second statement. Ashoka's Dhamma involved the worship of Buddha and following Buddhism. Is it correct? Did Ashoka mention about worship of Buddha and following Buddhism? He followed Buddhism. This is Dhamma mentioned. Did it? No. He worshipped. He was a Buddhist in the end. He came and died in Karnataka, they say. Chandragupta Maurya also died in Karnataka. There is some uh, mention in Mahavamsha. Mahamsha is a Sri Lankan uh, this thing. The Sri Lankan uh, Buddhist council had written that about uh, Ashoka. He had come twice to Sannati and he put an inscription there. Still the excavation is going on at Sannati and Maski and Kanaganahalli. Kanaganahalli, it's Raya Ashoka is written in Kanaganahalli. <coughs> so we get to know that uh, Ashoka was present in Maski and Sannati. So twice he visited Sannati, third time he didn't go back. He stayed there on the Sannati. So they, uh, they tell that he died in Sannati. Okay. So second statement is wrong. We can conclude that. <coughs> two, two. These to get eliminated. So I left it one only and one and three. What will be the answer? Did Ashoka talk about rituals? Ashoka as a king, what he did was, he talked about rituals, animal sacrifice and the conflict caused by them. Why do you think Ashoka talked about that? If at all he talked. Hmm. Ashoka mainly was a king, right? So during Ashokan times, why did Ashoka adopt Buddhism? There was animal sacrifice going on in Hinduism or other religions considered at that time. Or the Sanatana Dharma we call it. So Ashoka also talked about the rituals, animal sacrifice and the conflict as a king. So this statement is correct.
Understood? Answer is A, 1 and 3. <coughs> Who constructed the Sudarshan Lake? Chandragupta Maurya's governor. What's his name? Pushya Gupta. Pushya Gupta constructed it. Pushya Gupta. P U S H Y. He was governor of Chandragupta Maurya. Governor. Okay, next question. With reference to polity of Mauryan Empire, consider the following statements. Large province of Taxila, which provided blankets and other trade commodities, was a gateway to the northwest connecting the capitalism. Where is Taxila? Bihar. Any guess? Taxila? Yeah. It's in Pakistan Afghanistan border. It's Takshashila that time. Now it's Taxila. Okay. <clears throat> so, large, larger province of Taxila. Do you think it's correct? First statement. It was a gateway, you know, people could come there and sell their textiles. Got it? So, first statement is correct. Ujjain was access point to southern India which provided precious stones. Why do you get this information from like the Mauryan Empire? Why is it written? Because 